Hi, everyone. Welcome to Capitalism.com. I am chatting with my longest standing mentor today. His name is Travis Sago. You might have met him because I talk about him a lot. I talk about him in my book. I've had him on the podcast here several times. I have always found peace in my conversations with Travis. In fact, several times in therapy or doing a personal work, when I need to find a safe place or a calm place, I think about my chats with Travis. And I just decided to have one with him and record it. So this is not a fast paced podcast interview. This is a coffee chat with my mentor, Travis. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I know a lot of my peers and my colleagues are going through hard times right now. In fact, it seems like everybody that I know is going through some sort of unique challenge that is really messing up their life. And time with Travis seems to put it in perspective for me and for a lot of people. And I wanted to record an episode with him in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in the world, just to get his perspective on how we can find peace, joy, meaning during times of chaos. So this is probably not the podcast for you to listen to when you're in grind mode or when you are looking for content. This would be a good conversation to listen to while you're on a walk, while you're on a long drive and looking for some peace in the moment. I even found my stress levels coming down just while hearing Travis talk. So I, found, I hope you find some solace and some peace in the midst of everything that's going on in the world as a result of hearing this coffee chat with my mentor and dear friend, Travis Sago. Enjoy. Travis, the reason I wanted to have you on is because everyone that I know seems to be going through a very unique and hard time. I, I gave a, a class in front of my students and I, and I asked, it was in the middle of January, I said, has anybody had just the worst January? And all the hands went up, right? And, and now everybody seems to have a unique reason as to why some people have gone through health problems, financial yeah. problems, uncertainty about the world, relationship. It just, it feels like there's chaos in everyone's yeah. life. And without divulging too much, I know you've had your share of difficult times in the last two years too. And your set of challenges has been unique compared to everybody else's. The thing that I've always noticed and appreciated about you is if, if you're having a great day or you're having a bad day, I can't tell. You just seem to have a high level of peace in midst all of the chaos. And so to be honest with you, the reason I reached out and said, I want to have you on the podcast is I just feel like a lot of people need a dose of optimism and positivity right now from somebody who has not just had it all great for the last two years. You've been happy and at peace, it seems, and profitable, et cetera, despite going through a lot of crap the last couple of years. Yeah, um, I won't say I don't go in the bathroom and shit my pants. And <laughs> 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 you know, um, but I think we, we kind of all do that. But I think it's a, there's a place um, you know, I don't really want to call it happiness because everybody's got their same their idea of happiness or whatever. But I think for me, it's more just a place of okayness, calmness, uh, a sense of well-being, regardless of what's happening out there. Um, and I probably shared this with you before, but I wasn't always like this. Like in my in my twenties and early thirties, you know, I had hives all over my. I literally had nerve hives all over my arms. I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. I drank way, way too much. Um, <laughs> you know, um, all those kind of things, right? Um, and I think that the main flip there was kind of counterintuitive and opposite of what a lot of the personal development books teach around beliefs and thinking. And uh, I mean, I don't want to beat up on any particular kind of thing because I'm very unique and other people are very unique. So if it works for them, that's awesome. But I was never more fucking miserable than when I studied like law of attraction and tried to make my beliefs um, about myself even more concrete and beliefs on what um, other things meant um, about stuff like and trying to be right 
about a certain thing or not having any peace until I made everybody else think the same way that I did. <laughs> so these are kind of like all symptoms of that previous paradigm or that lens. Um, I think, and I think it's all we have was perspective and lenses. Right. And uh, what do you, what do you mean that previous lens, the previous perspective of what? Yeah. So um, looking out through the eyes of Travis Sago as a story that I believe in a, in a ego that um, I manufacture and the problem with the manufactured story or manufactured ego is that it consumes like half of your energy resources <laughs> trying to hold that up. And then not only that, but the implications of every, all the mistakes that are made trying to do that. Um, it's like, Oh, you know, I, I what's called a, we're probably gonna go all over the place. I have what's called wrong tool theory. So I think most of the inefficiencies in our lives in the world, even, um, and where all of our energy drains, which is our calmness and peaceness, like when our, our energy's way, way down, like you think of a battery, it's down to 20%. All of a sudden, the phone starts shutting shit off, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so very much our okayness and peacefulness and calmness has to do with where's our battery charge there, right? And if you were a, a bad app, a bad, quote, unquote, bad app on your phone, all of a sudden, like the battery just... <laughs> Like just right, like what the hell? What just happened, right? Well, a lot of us are just running around. Me previous, we're just running around with this app that continually sucks down our energy, right? And no, no matter what we eat, how fit we are, um, we still feel drained or unfulfilled all the time because we have this app running that is sucking it down. That app is our manufactured self. <laughs> I've been saying lately, uh, when I broke up with Travis Sega, when I broke up with him, like my life like started blossoming, right? I still have the story, but it's more of a empty shell of a story than this thing that I need to infuse it with energy, right? So I can look at my sales, right? I can see where my sales are. It doesn't matter what they are. It doesn't matter if I'm having a you know, a world's record breaking day for me, right? Or a world's breaking shit day for me, <laughs> right? Um, it doesn't mean anything about me. And that's easier to let go of because I understand that my story about myself is just that. It's a story. It's a manufactured self um, that, and I'm just pulling a number out of my butt here, that literally is responsible for depleting half of my energy budget, right? Like energy is just like money, right? First thing we got to plug the leaks. Like where, where is it leaking? Where's the money draining out? Where is the destructive expenses, <laughs> right? And it's our, it's our story about ourselves, right? That as soon as I manufacture Travis Sago, like, oh boy, now, now I've got like 50 more things on my to-do list every day. Well, Tra Travis, the way I'm hearing that, when you say yeah. the story of Travis Sago or the story yeah. of Ryan Moran, this this is a difficult concept for a lot of people to understand. Yeah. So the way that I'm hearing you say it is when you let go of the shoulds and the have to be's that we put on ourselves yeah. based on who we think we're supposed to be. From the context that we come from. Is that an accurate summary of what you're trying to describe as the story of ourselves? Yeah. And I want to go deeper, right? Because I think there's a deeper cause there. And I, this is what I call the wrong tool theory. I see this prevalent and I just hang out with a lot of smart people. So maybe this is just prevalent every, everywhere, but I see this hit a lot of smart people is that we use our intellect as a tool to do shit it's not supposed to fucking do. <laughs> I can't relate at all to this, Travis. Right? Like, <laughs> brain or mind or whoever we're talking to, like, I want you to figure out how to always make me safe. <laughs> how to make me always the most valuable person in any room. How never to make me look bad. How, you know, um, 
they always have the the most abdominal muscles like sh- showing or whatever. like brain you need to figure this out right like <laughs> And Teach me how. Show the, me the, how. Stack the, the deck intellect is a wonderful, a wonderful thing, right? For doing things that the intellect's supposed to do, but it's almost as ridiculous as going to Google and saying, "Google, what business should I be in?" and expecting to get a valid answer <laughs> mm. At, out from that, right? So, um, I probably shared this story with you before, but too bad for you. You got to hear it again, right? <laughs> Um, but my wrong tool theory like applies in a lot of areas, but this particular one, but um, the the man I call my father, right? He was my stepfather. He lived across the street. He came into my life when I was about nine years old. Um, he's passed away now, right? But he lived across the street and I was the oldest of four and I loved repairing my bicycle, but oldest of four, my mom, right? No man in the house. And I had like, I had like a, a Phillips screwdriver, a straight screwdriver and a pair of pliers. Well, I don't know if you were into BMX when you were a kid or like, but like you, you want to change the parts out on those things, right? Like you want to like get new handlebars, the new gooseneck, right? And so when I used the pliers, like on a brand new bolt, like it wasn't too bad, right? Like you could kind of do it, right? If you gripped hard enough, right? And, but it would eventually kind of strip out that bolt until like if you did it enough, right? Then you just like, I don't care how determined you are, like you got a, a round nut, right? <laughs> and it, it's hard to get that damn thing out of there, right? Um, and so my whole life changed when my dad came over and kind of saw what I was doing, and said, all oh, saw my rounded out nuts on my bike, right? He's like, and he introduced me to something that was a, a freaking miracle at the time, it was called a socket set. I was like, whoa, right? So we replaced all the the um, bolts that I rounded out with that. He's big. He looked like Mister Clean, right? He's big, strong. Right? I just took those old stripped out bolts. We put the new bolts on and the new nuts on, right? But that socket set, boy, like bicycle maintenance was a heck of a lot easier. Mm. And I think the same thing, you know, with life, right? I'm not saying you never have to replace. You, you never get a flat tire. You never, you know, have something go wrong but when you have the right tools life maintenance is a lot easier i see this in business too i don't want to take this too far business path but we use like most even business i don't know the difference between marketing and sales so they use a marketing tool like webinars for a sales tool and they use a phone which is actually a sales tool as a marketing tool Mm. right and they use a product to make sales and to create money from and that's not the mo- that's not the most useful thing of a product is to develop a relationship with somebody get them a result and, have, and turn them into a customer right so all these all these things are ego created right we want to get to the money now because our ego our story of ourselves says well i got to make the sales higher so i'll be the whatever right so i can hire more employees and then when, I, when i'm at my next conference and they say well how many employees do you have well i can have this big number and hopefully their number will be lower than mine <laughs> <laughs> right. So it becomes this thing, this tool that we're using just rounds out all the nuts in our life. Right. And it works for a little while. That's the diabolical part. Right. It works for a little while. Whew, right. Until it doesn't work anymore. How how does that apply into kind of this state of the world that we're in right now? Oh. And there's somebody listening who is lost everything as a result of stock market crash or because of layoffs or because of inflation can't afford their employees anymore. How does a real life scenario play into that philosophical example? Well, I'm not Buddha and I probably never will be. So again, like, I I don't know, you call yourself the bum marketer. I think you should be like the bum (laughs) Zudist, the bum Buddhist. (laughs) So I think it's about, you know, how fast do you clean your pants up after you shit? Not that you don't shit your pants, right? Like at some point, right? But I think there's this point where you have an event. And this is a, this is a, again, this is where our, we use our thinking as a tool. We have an event and humans have this habit of attaching meaning to an event or attaching yes. meaning to a thing, right? Um, the more 
we think that whatever has happened really means this thing, like the, the longer it's gonna change, take us to change our underpants, right? <laughs> the more meaning we have attached to the event, yeah. the yeah. longer it takes for us to clean ourselves up or to That's clean right. up the thought pattern. Yeah, um, you know, so- That, gonna, that rings true. Yeah, that so it's gonna, true. it's gonna take longer, like, you know, so, you know, if, if all of a sudden, like I've got all my money, um, riding in the stock market, right? And I take a 50%, 70% hit, right? I'm like, sheesh, like <laughs> I can have all this story going on, right? But like if a Martian came down and looked at my screen, he, he would just see like lines, he'd be like, what's the problem? Like, no, I just lost money. Okay, so, so what does that mean, right? Like I'm not being ridiculous ridiculous with this right but that's kind of the thing right and then but we get to choose a more useful focal point i call this muff p more useful focal point is how can i use what just happened how can i use that right for my future stuff right so like even me brand like when i was nine years old rounding out the nuts on those things right and i couldn't get that damn thing off like i thought it was the end of the damn world i just wanted to throw my my bike but now 40 some odd years later i'm still using that as a template, right? And a thing to tell a story from and using that thing, right? So um, Jeannie, um, back in 2011, had to have extensive dental work done, right? And we had a hard time finding the right people for her, right? And it, going through it was like, holy crap, like, because we didn't know. We didn't know what comes next from that, right? But what I did know is like whatever happened, we're going to turn this into a thing, a tool that will help us in the in the future, right? And this is not like this is not like oh everything happens for a reason, because things happen, right? There's not necessarily a reason for them, but we can take those things and use them as a tool to be useful for what happens right um i don't know if you saw you this can, youtube you can turn the shit into a tool essentially that's right you know uh, 50 cent calls this turning shit into sugar which is one of my favorite things it's still shit right but how do you if you take shit and fertilize it use it for fertilizer out in a cane field right like sugar cane field all of a sudden you're gonna turn that mm. the sugar right like um i i see yeah you've got shit but you can use it for fertilizer. Still shit, but you can at least use it for something. Yeah. Um, Travis, would you give an example of how that has played out for you in the last couple of years? And you don't need to give personal details about everything that has happened unless you want to, but just the perspective of being able to use everything that has happened as fuel to get you to this point. Would you give an example of that? Yeah, well, like, I kind of am already like what, what area do you want it in? Do you want it in health or like you have it? You have it. Let's, let's do it in business just to okay. make this super relatable. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've always, at one point, like I'm pretty good at sales. Right. Um, and so I would get on, this is like back in 2012, 2013. So like the big model and it still is the model is like, get people to show up on a phone call and, and you close them and all that kind of stuff. Right. So um, hired two sales guys to come in so I could teach them how to do the sales thing, man. And then I just hated freaking managing salespeople and, and the herd. Right. So I'm like, how can I do this? Right. So here's the thing. It's shit. Like, I don't want to like, ugh, right. So I've got two salespeople, right. But you got a salesperson. Now you got to drive them leads all the time. Right. Or they end up leaving you. Right. <laughs> right. There's all kinds of drama and, and headaches with that. Right. And it's just like, OK, well, like, how am I going to do this? Right. So I'm like, well, what if we figured out how to do it without the salespeople? How do what if we started by just making their conversations shorter? And this is where I really started learning the difference between marketing and sales. Right. Because um, at first, like the first sales calls they would do, they came off of my list. Right. And they were closing like nine out of 10, right? Like, oh, we're the mm -hmm. best salespeople ever, right? And then we start buying colder traffic and they're like, oh, these leads suck, right? Like, 
all these kind of things, right? Like these are terrible leads, right? And it really got me to see the difference between marketing and sales, right? I'm like, okay, what, what steps I have to have to go through before, so we can move this from a 60 minute strategy session to a six minute strategy session, right? Um, and then when I got that down, I'm like, okay, well, how can we just get rid of this at all, right? And that's when I figured out how to um, sell through chat or text or email all the way things up to where like 60 grand is my top thing I've done outside of real estate. Right. But so you I just sold took, a $60,000 item without a, a phone sale. Yeah. Lots of without them. a phone call. Yeah. Lots, lots of, of them. them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, again, that's understanding what tools they use where, right. And where, where they're at. So I don't want to get too deeply involved in that. Right. But I took a shit situation, which is like, Oh, it was terrible. I mean, it, it, we just kind of sharing that a little bit. Right. Sales guys weren't happy. Like I'm, oh, we just a shit leads right now, and and all these kind of things, right? Um, I'm just like, okay, so if I'm not attaching my ego to this, what do I really want, right? Well, really, what I want is no salespeople, <laughs> right? And, and the end guys, so you know, how can I blank without blank, right? How can I you know make all these sales without blank, right? So everything for me is just be I look at it as is a opportunity to innovate or create something, which I think in my perspective is what humans are here for. That's my perspective that we're the only species that, ha that has any concept of the future. Right. So I, in my experience, right. In my, again, I wouldn't want to bet on this. Right. But it seems to me that we're here to create or produce tools that helps make life easier mm -hmm. on some level. Now that might be painting a, a picture or playing in a ball game or something like that, right? But we're here to create art or create something that adds mm -hmm. more joy into somebody's life or makes life a little bit less energy taxing, right? Gives them more time or, mo or, or those kind of things, right? So everything that comes up, I'm like, okay, well, how can I use this to create a tool or create something new or create a better relationship? Like most relationships are forged, not on the good times, you know, they're forged in like when the shit, again, shit is attaching meaning to whatever event pops up, right? They're, let's say a less useful thing pops up, right? And then we figure out how to collaborate on it together to get us over that challenge which strengthens the relationship yeah the the last two years were a whirlwind for most of us uh for me personally i i would i really had a lot of story tied up to my investment portfolio yeah as yeah. where my my nest egg is and i had it very heavily exposed to growth in tech stocks which got just absolutely crushed in the last six months. Yeah. And I remember going for a walk with a friend of mine, his name is Tom here in town. And as he was sharing kind of something similar about this, the story and the meaning that I had attached to this. And I looked up at him and I said, it just occurred to me now for the first time in this moment that I am upset about numbers on a computer screen. <laughs> I'm, I am not worried about selling a house or a car yeah. or feeding my children or clothing children or my kids going to a great school or or any of that i'm upset yeah. because the number on the screen is different than my expectation or what i had normalized and the thoughts that i had created around that change and there's this quote from byron katie that i like a lot where she just asked the question Besides your thoughts, are you okay? Yeah, that's it. That's where all that's where all of our feeling comes from. Is it's not really the thought itself; it's how much energy we put in the thought. Because we can have all kinds of thoughts that we don't have doesn't bother us. It's the ones we put energy into, right? Um, would, you why, say, again, would you would you say more about what you mean about put, putting your energy into the thoughts? Yeah. So we say it, it usually means we attach meaning to it. It means something about our identity. That's the energy that we put there, right? But like, we've had this discussion before, right? Like if somebody says, hey, you know, you've got purple hair, right? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't got purple hair, right? It doesn't mean anything about me, but like they say, oh man, it looks like your hairline's receded, you know, two inches, like what the, 
you know, like if that means something, right? Like, yeah. um, right. So those kind of things, but you know, people say, oh, social media is quote unquote bad for your, for you or your brain or whatever. Well, social media is just a thing, right? Yeah, I think cool. what makes social media um, draining for us is because it makes us, it doesn't make us do anything. We like, oh, now I've got to, who am I? And I've got to like bolster my identity and attach more energy into that meaning about who I am. I'm a libertarian. I'm a conservative. I'm a this. I, I believe this. I'm for that. I'm against this. And mm. it just, again, so, so I was the most miserable with law of attraction, which says your thoughts are things, right? So you should put a lot of energy in there, right? And that shit mm. didn't work for me, man. Like it would work really great to give me hives and make me smoke a lot. And, um, you know, you know, and then even worse because like I wasn't getting the things, right? So I thought everybody tell me I was doing it wrong, right? <laughs> but adding more energy into a thought, right? It was backwards for me. Understanding how thought works and understanding that all your feelings come from thoughts, regardless of what's going on. Like I always say, Ron, you you, make, you crack me up, you make me laugh. But what's really happening is my story. You tell me something, my story about you, right, is making me laugh. Like if that makes sense, right? It Just does. like there's other people that no matter what they say, I tell a story about it, and it pisses me off. <laughs> but it's not them pissing me off, and that's that's the distinction I think that. Mm. keeps you with the well-being and the okayness and um you know if you want to lab- attach a label to happy with but just that sense of well-being i believe uh and not strongly but it appears to me that um kids are naturally in a w- calm well-being state um yes they shit their pants and they have tantrums right but they go back to that you know they go back to that place until they learn about identity Man, this makes so, so much sense right, right now because like Philip pooped his pants in public a few days ago and he came over to me and said, daddy, I pooped and <laughs> I took him home and we changed him and it was over. Yeah. You know, and in t- until he has learned to attach shame to that yep. until he has learned. Wow. I, I, that was such a good analogy, Travis, for me, because I, it's so fresh in my mind. He doesn't care. He hasn't thought about it since he hasn't learned that that's weird. He hasn't learned that that's shameful. He hasn't learned that that's gross. Despite the fact that both myself, his older sister and the friends that we were out with were all going, Ooh, 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 that is rough. Oh, Philip. Oh, that's a no shame because he doesn't know to attach it. And I just understood what you meant when you said that you became happier or freer when you broke up with Travis Seiko and what now, what I am hearing from you is that the the analogies come to mind is I'm fascinated by my Republican friends who think the world suddenly changed when Joe Biden became president. And I, I tend to lean Republican, but I'm just fascinated that so many of my friends thought the world was great and the country was great two years ago, and it has somehow massively changed. And what I'm hearing you say is that that is the identification of both myself as Republican and the world with how it should be. And then finding the thoughts that counteract that or that go against that to be very stressful because of what that means. But if you break up with that story, if you don't have that meaning, those thoughts don't bother you. Anymore. It's like if, if you could, if you could look in the mirror and say, you know, dude, I'm gonna give you a break, man. For the next week, you don't have to worry about if you're successful. You don't have to worry about if you're got the right political party. If you, you don't have to worry about like if you look good. Mm. Like how freeing with that, like all that stuff. Like I'm, I'm just gonna handle that. Whoever's in the mirror, I'm just going to handle that for you, right? You go on vacation for the next week and just do what comes to you, right? The fear is like, oh, we'll just be, be lazy slobs and, you know, you know um, 
evil or whatever the, those things are like we we need all these we need that we need all of that programming it's really just program we need all that programming in order to be good productive humans right um and it has like we always say kids oh they're so innocent right and there's it's programming that fucked them up <laughs> that's right? right you know and i'm using that as a, a attaching meaning to it right but just using it in a way that we would talk here, right? You know, I don't want to get deep into all the current events, right? But everything going on, right, um, isn't coming from a place of innocence. It's coming from a place of, I believe this so strongly that I'm willing to kill for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, holy crap, right? Like, and somewhere that's coming out of an identity, whether it's an identity for the person, identity for the tribe, identity for whatever it is, like there, it, it's based off of that, right? In a variety of different areas. I mean, I, right. th- that is, I think that is tribal think at its core, is I believe something so strongly about someone's identity, my own or someone else's, that I'm... I'm willing to kill for it. But Travis, someone might say that there is something very useful about that too. If you genuinely believe that you're correct or that another person is dangerous or that uh, Bill Gates is trying to kill us all. My goodness. Yeah. Shout out to all you Bill Gates conspiracy nuts. Uh, <laughs> the, the oh, I'm going to get some hate for that one. The, the, there are people who genuinely believe that there is a dangerous group of people out there, a them yeah. out there that is a yeah. threat to what I call myself. And so what, what would you say to those who think it is, who would say it's useful to have a degree of that mentality? Yeah. So now here's where you're going to get me in trouble, right? This is very, <laughs> right. I went first. Um, so this is a, a this is a human lens. Now we're all humans, right? At least hopefully people listening to this that are understanding it are human, right? So I don't know of a way to not have thoughts, right? But it is the kind of the, the meaning that we attach to that. But if we can understand this, right? Like the, the higher power, the higher consciousness or the infinite wisdom or whatever you want to call it out there doesn't have a problem with death. Mm. It's not, they're not labeling. So a problem we have, we label all this stuff, good, bad, evil, terrible. Um, and I know it is, you know, whatever's going on, whatever that thing is, right? Yes, you can look at it from a human perspective and say, wow, like there's people X, Y, Z, Right that's still a human lens that we're looking through. Right. Um, I don't want to use the word God so much. I'm trying not to use that word. Right. Because it means so many different things. Right. But like mother nature doesn't weep when an apple falls from the tree. Right. And it hits the ground and we go eat it or mother nature doesn't weep when a lion eats a gazelle. Right. Um, and I understand this makes me seem very callous and insensitive and as, like, I don't have feelings. Right. I do. I have those same thoughts and, and those same feelings, but I have a different perspective on it now because I'm, I've broken free a lot of the habit of attaching deep, deep meaning to that and not trying to be right about it. Like my, my life changed a lot when I'm like, you know what, when it changed from, Dude, you're probably right from about 99% of shit and you're only wrong about 1%. My life was a fucking wreck. When that switch just said, I don't know shit. There's probably only 1% of the things I need to know, right? And the rest of it, I don't know. And I'm completely okay with that, right? But where can I focus that's most useful, right? Like, there's a saying, like, if every man was at peace with himself, there would be no war, right? So I think that to me, that's the most awesome thing I can do is to find peace for myself, maybe help somebody else find peace, Yes. right? Um, part of the reason why I wanted to come on here and, and do this, right? For the one person that's not steaming mad at me now, because like, 
I'm not outraged, right? And, and I do. Like, if I had a magic wand, I'd change it, right? Like, I'm not saying I wouldn't put peace in everybody's heart and stop all the the ego and the identity from clubbing one each another or whatever is going on, whatever that, that club thing is, right? But I think that we're more useful with a calm and peaceful heart. Like, who do you want to operate on you? Like if, if somebody's doing surgery on, on you and something goes wrong, do you really want them to freak the fuck out? Oh my God, we, we cut the wrong thing, right? Like this is terrible. No, you want somebody that's, okay, four steps, please, right? Mm-hmm. And gonna come clear-headed, level-headed, Right. Maybe point something out that would be useful from this. Right. Um, If our stocks are crashing. Right. And our family is depending on us. Right. Do we really want to freak the fuck out? We're like, okay, like, why don't we get out of the market? Do we know which way it's going to go? No, we don't know which way it's going to go. And maybe even after the math, say, am I, why did I lose that money to begin with? Am I, re- is this really a, the most useful tool for me? Right. Do I really understand how to mitigate my risk? And do I really understand how I can maximize my um, payoff? Do I, can I get an infinite ROI out of, out of this or just, you know, um, those kind of things. Right. Because again, like my, this is just my Travis Sago theory, wrong tool theory right? Creates most of the inefficiencies, like, um, but we want to have those, that clear headedness. <laughs> yes. Right. You know, um, to me is a better place to come from. It's funny you say this because it was the exact advice that someone gave me. Someone I look up to said, the first thing we got to do, Ryan, before we fix this problem is get you into a good mental state. And the, the best way to fix your mental state is not to fix the problem. It's to maybe stop the bleeding and reassess. Yeah. Which in the moment, I didn't really want to hear. Like, no, tell me how to fix the problem. <laughs> Thought you were my friend. Yeah. And the way you fix the problem is to fix yourself or to change, adjust your perspective on the situation, which for me was walking away from it for a little bit. You know, take, taking a month off from checking my stock portfolio every day to re, to get some, catch my breath and come back and reassess this. Yeah. But Travis, in the example of there being these groups of people who seem to be at each other's throats, I, I agree with you. I, I have said publicly, yeah. I don't want to be part of the resistance. I want to be a bridge builder. I don't, I don't, I don't want to put up a fight. I don't want to fight the other side. I want to, I want to walk across a bridge to the other side, understand them and mend bridges. That's that's the role I want to play. It's just who I am and the role I want to play in this world. And there are those who have communicated to me and their opinion that if you are not standing for one side, preferably their side, that you are part of the problem. That is bridge builders that are the problem in this world. It's not bridge builders we need. It's more people on our yeah. side that is the problem, or that that would that would change yeah. things. How how would you respond to that? I don't know that I would. I'd just be like, I understand your perspective, right? And I don't mean I have to adopt it. Um, I think that our focus our perspective gets too narrowed down sometimes right and we especially because we don't live in a world that looks through screen thought it's gonna be on video or not i'm holding up my iphone right we look through a screen and then we use our intellect again that tool to say oh this is what's really going on in the world and forgetting that i've got Somewhere, probably this is from the part west, probably came from China. Like how many people did it take to bring me the shirt that I'm wearing, right? And we're talking to, you're in Texas and I'm in Arkansas, talking on Zoom, right? Um, I'm sitting in a chair that's super comfortable. Like um, the mail person's going to bring me mail here. And I'd be like, 
all the support that I have, yes. right? All of this amazing stuff that's going on right now. I'm not saying not to like just totally ignore any of the quote unquote bad stuff and just look at quote unquote good stuff, right? But it helps if we take it all in all at the same time to get a more valid um, feedback of what's mm. really happening in the world. I can't remember who said this. I think it was Byron Katie, but she's like, you're always okay. Even on your deathbed, you're okay. Mm. Right. Like what's the worst that's going to happen. You're going to go to sleep. Right. And we don't know what's going to happen. Then is my personal um, thought. We don't know what's going to happen then. And to me, if we're not supposed to know what happened, if we were supposed to know what happened, we would know what happened. So I'm not, it's not useful for me. (laughs) Right. And again, this is me. I'm not saying for somebody else. Like if you're, a theologian or study, maybe that's useful for you, but it's not useful for me in my life to spend time wondering what's going to happen. Like the lights go out, right? That somebody throws dirt on my face, right? Um, it's just not a useful part of my life, right? Um, I guess I'm good, bad. I just look at what's the most useful focal point um, for me, right? Um And Travis, I have to highlight, I think the reason why you can be okay with that comes back to what you started with, which is that you don't identify with being Travis Sago. You're you more on my, on my good days. For sure. You have, you have, you have, you have learned that the story that you have of yourself being this physical, mental, emotional representation of who you are is not the full story or it is part of the story and not the full thing. Yep. And, and therefore you can be okay with even the idea of this story dying because you don't have meaning or you at least don't have all of your meaning attached to That's right. that yeah. one event. I don't have a lot of energy in it anymore. Right. Like, you know, it's, it's interesting to look at extremes on both sides. Right. The most extreme people that put so much energy into their thoughts, right, are usually in prison or in an insane asylum, right? Mm. Oh, they cut me off in traffic, disrespected me, and now I'm going to go shoot them, right? And I'm going to take it, again, extreme, right, Um, on that, right? Or they're crazy, like... I did this because voices told me to do it. And I believe those voices. So that's a very, very extreme. Yeah. Right. Then on the other side that we have, um, you know, the Buddha, right. (laughs) You know, Um, so we're probably somewhere in between there. Right. But I think the more we can detach from this story of ourselves, I really think half of our energy drains down because we have this manufactured self that we always got to defend. We've always got to offend right um as well mm. as defend right and we always get we're always like where does it stack up in the status yes. game right um rather than a, playing a creation game we play a status game right um of where do we stack up and there's no winning that game right like even when you right. even if you're very very on the top now now you're like oh who's who's gunning for me like if you're the king right now you gotta like worry about who's who's trying to dethrone me <laughs> right? right um you know, so you got all those things and there is no peace, right? You're not going to have any peace if you got to make everybody think like you too, right? I can't have any peace until everybody believes this thing, right? And maybe that's something for you to shoot for, but just don't expect any peace on this planet, right? Um, you know, but I think it's a more There's- powerful position to come from, right? Like I get shit done unbelievable shit that people like how the fuck you do that right well my ego is not in the way and i'm okay to fail at stuff too right um it's like i've got this no pitch i'm really hopped up on this right now but i'm really hopped up on this no pitch ask me anything there's no pitch in there at all no pitch and when i put up the replay we're at 50 dollars per view by me just putting a few paragraphs down underneath 
the th- the the thing, right? This is just the right tool. Like, I'm not I'm not against pitches either, right? But do we? Uh, what I was testing is we really need to have the pitch. Like, how much is the pitch really account for mm. the sales? Not very. F- I mean, could it could I made some more sales? Yeah, right. But how much faster can we do AMAs? How much more focused we be on getting them the result if we didn't have mm. to worry about the pitch, right? Those kind of things, right? So I always always run it back to business, but that's kind of where my my mind is focused, right? So. Yeah, what you said earlier reminded me of a quote that you often bring up from Michael um, Michael Singer, which is that you won't be okay or everything won't be okay until you are okay with everything. Yeah. yeah and that drives people crazy sometimes, right? And, yes. You know, so either it, you get to be one extreme or the other, like, that's such bullshit. Right. And the first time I read, I tried to read that untethered soul. Like I thought it was all bullshit. <laughs> what the F, right. And it was, like, it was like, I don't remember how many years later, but some years later, maybe five or I don't, I don't remember. But I was like, man, this is the best book ever written when I was, I, I, I get agree. overly hyped up on books. I'm, right. But it's like, it's a top 10 for me. Right. I agree. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Would you explain why that quote specifically? stands out to you because I think it captures a lot of the essence of what you are saying in this conversation. Yeah. But I'd like for you to explain what that means to you. Well, because I can fix me. I can't fix the stock market. <laughs> I can't fix um you know maybe a low sales convert. If they're not converting, they're not converting, right? But I can fix me. I can go in, I can always um, go deeper and, and see um, what is it that I'm not seeing, right? It's always about me, right? On some level, right? Me not being mm. Travis Sago, but it's about my, it's about where I'm putting my focus at. If, I, if I'm not feeling okay, it can't be the event. Event is just an event, right? It's my thinking about the event, right? And somewhere, it's not even the thinking, it's not having the thought, right? But attaching that energy, giving that energy right that's depleting our battery battery to that thought right which i don't have to do i can just step back for it and say what what's happening right what's the cause and effect my favorite dead mentor is eli goldratt what's the what's what is this an effect or is it in a cause right and then i can get down to the root cause right and say oh well this is why that's why that's happening for me right in, the, in our we started as like calmness, okayness. How do we stay okay, right? The reason we're not okay is not what's happening out there. It is our thoughts. So to take this back to my electronics background, right? Like you have a radar screen. You ever seen those on the movie, right? The radar s- screen swoops around, right? And when it's working correctly, it only identifies actual con, what they call contacts out there, ships, islands, um, you know, something out there in the water, right? And it makes getting from point A to point B very efficient, right? But, and that's like humans, right? But if we start adding noise, right? So my job was to make sure the mm. signal to noise ratio was correct. <laughs> and if you think there's a bunch of noise on there, one of two things is going to happen. One, you're going to take a long way around right? Because you don't know what's noise and what's actually a ship in front of you. Or you're going to say, oh, well, I think this is, I think this little squiggle right here is just noise, right? And if it's not, it turns out to be the iceberg, you know, like the Titanic, then you're screwed, right? Like, so, but everything's okay, right? But if you add all that thought, all that noise, and you don't, then you lose your your centeredness, right? Um, and life becomes confusing. You don't know how to get from point A to point B anymore. You don't know how to, to be useful, right? Because you've got all this noise, you got to go around, or you just stay put because you don't know if it's a ship, right? Especially if it's all around you <laughs> and everything looks like, oh my God, there's no way to go. There's nowhere to go, right? Does that make sense? It does. And, and the way that I'm processing that is, I, if I'm working with a client and I tell them a million dollar business is just four products times 25 sales a day at a $30 price point, that's 
that's a thought, that's a lesson. And the practice is to plug in the four products, get them to 25 sales a day and repeat yeah. over four products, right? It's like very linear, very straight to the yeah. point where my work comes in with that client is overcoming things like, well, Joe told me about TikTok ads. And so-and-so told me about this. And I even had a client say, I, I had a client say this very recently. Well, I'm, I'm worried that valuations on businesses are going to go down as a result of Biden's tax plan and inflation. And I was like, dude, you haven't sold a product yet. <laughs> <laughs> there's, Wait, let there's, me ask you, all this the, person, that's all the noise. Was this person very intelligent? Yes. Yeah. I, I see that a lot because what they're trying to do is make everything safe before they mm. put the car into drive and, and get it off the curve. I always, my saying is you can't steer a parked car. And I, and I also, I try to take the blame for people, but I drive super analytical people batshit crazy because I'm a very <laughs> much, let's put it in the drive, right? Now, I always want to be weighing our risk and reward, right? So I'm not saying like to go walk a tightrope 100 yards above with no safety net right but very often the only thing we're risking is our ego right like if we if we take a wrong turn even if we have friends in the back of the car like the worst thing that's going to happen is we're like we have to say you know what i went the wrong way i need to make a u-turn right the only thing that's really happened is like maybe we spent a little bit of gas right but we're mostly worried about what our friends in the back think yes well, right travis don't know where the hell he's going right right <laughs> <laughs> right but what, what will happen is we keep on going on the same path even though we think oh i think i'm going the wrong way but i'm going to say anything because like then i look bad right um but what i call this is like so and i'm not trying to beat up on people i have a son that has 160 iq he's super super smart but they have a tendency of sitting in the car and saying you know what one map is not good enough i need four maps i need three gps's i need somebody to please call ahead for me, right? At every single, like at every mile point and make sure there's nothing bad that's happened like a long <laughs> way, right? Before I start, right? And what's interesting is like humans already know how to, to operate, right? If we, again, that's using the, our intellect for the wrong tool, right? When we're driving in the fog, we know what to do, right? We know the worst thing that we could do is to stop. Right. Then we're going to take it in the butt. Right. Like that's the worst thing you can do. Like you want to drive slow and you want to drive cautious. Right. Um, make sure you get your low beams on. Right. Like it, it's like it's like intellect. You turn the intellect on too high, too far. Like then you, you see worse. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> really like so bad. You just got to stop. Right. Then you, like but I, I see this with really smart intelligent people that use their intellect because they have this tool, right? Now they want to use it for everything. And they're like me with a pair of pliers on the bike, right? Just rounding out the shit out of everything, you know? And that's what you're calling noise. The noise that distracts us from the focal point. Yeah. And so the, the other side of this is to practice the thoughts that serve us and take us to where we want to go. So how do you flip that script, Travis? It sure seems effortless for you. It sure seems effortless for yeah. you to show up calm. It, so, it's a lot less effort when we're not labeling everything good, bad, evil, good, should, shouldn't. We're breaking free from our programming and we're just looking at what's the most useful focus doesn't matter if it's good or bad. But what's the most useful, useful focus mm. right here, right? I'll, I'll give you a really great example. This comes up all the time and the people that I help because we do a lot of deals, right? So I would say that's their focus, your focus, and the most useful focus, right? So when we propose a deal kind of in the, in the business that we have, we, we usually share a percentage. We share a revenue share percentage, right? But what's common for humans when you start talking about a number is all the focus goes on that number, all the focus goes on that percentage, right? That's not, anytime you're focusing on one number, it's probably not the most useful focal point, mm -hmm. right? 
So in any relationship, there's usually something that you want to do together, right? So if I'm trying to work a deal with you, right, and we're going to share a percentage, I want to pull back from that and take a bigger area of view and say, Ryan, let's not make this about a percentage. It's about a partnership. And what we really want to do is we want to grow this income stream as big as, as possible, right? Isn't that, is that what we, like, we want to grow the income stream for you. I want to grow the income stream um, for me at the same time, right? So I want to make sure that we, we get to a number that allows us to do that, right? And I'm sure you'd much rather have uh, 50% of a million than 80% of 100,000, right? Um, the worst thing I could possibly do to you is take a percentage that's too small because I won't be able to grow the incomes, our income stream. Conversely, like if I take one that's too big, right? Then, and I bleed you dry, that's not gonna make for a good relationship either, right? So now I've just put the, the whole concept of the percentages, right? And there, now what will happen a lot of times is say, why don't we just split it 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. and, a lot of times I'll say, you know what, depending on the price and everything, like I, I'll, I'll have to lower my percentage. I'm like, you know what, I can actually do this for less, right? And I want this to be profitable for you, right? And work for you too, right? Um, but the most useful focal point is never a percentage when you're talking about a relationship and what's the big thing that you're trying to accomplish. That's a like a weird business example, but it's very, we, we get faced with these things every single day, right? Um, but we like label good, bad, yep. useful, not useful. We get our identity involved, right? It's like payment programs is another one for me, right? Like if the purpose of a product is not to make a sale, especially a front end product, but to get somebody in as a customer and get them a, uh, get them a result. So we develop the relationship. Why not make that hole like... If we got if we if we have a hole that's like golf ball size, right? It's gonna be hard to get the, that golf ball through the hole. But if we open up the manhole, right? And let's let them let's give them a big long payment program, especially if we have a self milking cow situation, which means after they come in, they'll be generating some cash to, to pay us, right? Why not open that up, right? It's more efficient. Does that make sense? But it does. We, we too focus on oh, I'm gonna lose. And here's the diabolical part about this. I'm going to lose money, right? If I don't get the payments up front. And here's what we figured out. We make more money cash collected up front because when we say, Hey, Ryan, this is 10 payments of 590, right? You say, I'm in. I'm mm -hmm. like, awesome. Um, we have a pay in full discount. Would you like to hear about that? Yes, I would. Great. We can save you a thousand bucks if you want to pay, make one payment of 4,900. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. Now we've test this over and over again with different split test, we collect more money by doing that because we get so many more people to say I'm in. Like if they're going to pay full pay to begin with, right? They still pay full pay, but it's so much easier to say I'm in after that. It's like the micro commitment going in, right? And we're too focused on cash, collecting the cash up front, right? That's not the most useful focus point, right? At least that I found. So Travis, you work with us zany entrepreneurs every day. The favorite thing. And and my favorite you, peeps. That's right. Yeah. Mine too. Yeah. We are a zany bunch. Yeah. And 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 we have our own unique fears and perspectives. And you've dealt with just as many as I have over the last two years who are scared about their business, scared about their livelihood, scared yeah. about the market, scared about politics, scared about international relations. I'm just curious overall, how you're coaching people through this time. Overall, what are you telling them that is allowing them to find peace in the, in the middle of the storm? And, and I ask this specifically because I don't know a single person in this world who comes out of a conversation with Travis Sago not feeling better. <laughs> uh, like, my ego likes that very much. <laughs> the story of Travis Sago likes yeah. it. I mean, I've told you this privately, but when, when I'm feeling chaotic, my meditation is often put myself in your coffee room. Yeah. Having, having a, uh, a brew with Travis. So what, what are you saying in those conversations 
with those who are coming to you feeling chaotic? Here's what I endeavor to do or try to do. Um, It's not like nobody ever worries about oxygen. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't ever worry about it. It's like, oh, how much oxygen do I have today? Like, how much oxygen am I consuming? Do I need to start storing oxygen like in my garage? Um, What do I what do I need to do? Right. To get more oxygen. Right. And something far worth less worth with less worth is money. Right. Let's use money. But. Money has less worth than oxygen is what you mean. Yeah. With less worth than oxygen. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> like you know, um, but we'll put a lot of focus on that, right? Because we attach meaning to it. Like, oh, it's it's our safety, it's our security, it's our yeah, all these things, right? But like even oxygen, right? It's pretty much useless unless you know how to breathe. <laughs> yeah. If you have lung problems, right? Like Jeannie's having some lung issues right now, right? Um, so she's not worried about the oxygen. She's worried about like, how do I get my ability to breathe stronger? And so this is the same thing I try to do. I try to point out that they already have these abilities, right? They're just putting too much focus on the security, right? When you know how to breathe, like you're not going to worry about money anymore, right? There's a woodshed down here. I walk by it all the time, right? Um, It's my my neighbor's house, right? I just have these little imaginary conversations that goes on in my head sometimes, which make qualify me for the insane asylum but, <laughs> you know sometimes this pile gets down low right but then all of a sudden it fills back up again right but i bet he doesn't put a lot of thought to that right like his wife's not saying oh mark the wood pile is low again he's, he's not like damn it like you know he's not worried about it he's just gonna he's gonna get more wood he's gonna chop down more trees or just get the wood wherever it comes from right um but like if she wants a new dress or a new car, like, damn, what do you think I made of money or something? Like, mm-hmm. no, like, so what we worry about is like our ability, what we're really worried about is our ability. Yes. Out there, right? That's part of it. I never, I, it sounds braggadocious, but I really don't, like, I know how to breathe. Like, you can literally take everything away from me, right? Give, I mean, I'd have to beg, borrow, or steal a cell phone. But if I have a cell phone and a way to email somebody or, a way to private message them. Like I'm going to put a deal together. I'll be back in business. Right. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a producer, right. There's a difference between creator and producer. I'm going to get into a lot of it. Right. But I can just take what already is existing out there, put them together. Right. So I'm just looking for the cards that make the Royal flush. I don't need to have all the cards. So I'd look for the ACE, the King, the queen, the Jack and 10. I can just put them all together. Right. And next thing you know, money's going to come out. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I just I just want to give an example about this yeah. to highlight what you're saying. You used to call it the producer mindset. That's right. I, yeah. I call it the owner's model. Yeah. Uh, very similar concept. I, I'm doing a, a working on a deal right now where there is a company for sale that I see a lot of opportunity in. I have, I'm not normally I would say go raise capital to do it. So you're not at risk. I'm not even doing that. I have a partner who is raising the capital. Yeah. I, I know how to run the company, but I'm more of a visionary and I'm focused on capitalism.com right now. So I am bringing on a CEO. And interestingly enough, the CEO makes it easier to raise capital because he's got a network and experience. And uh, that CEO needs an operator. So we went and created a partnership with an operating team. Yep. And, and, and I will say, I mean, call me if you need me, but it, you guys got this, right? And I'll yeah. and I'll have I'll have ownership and profit shares for putting the deal together. And it's one of those examples where I've realized, like you are saying, if you know how to produce, that's a, that that is always a profitable skill. Versus my attachment to being profitable this month over last month causes yeah, or your identity envelops your product. Right? Yes. Now, now my product, now if my product stops selling, I'm fucked. Exactly that. Right. Because it's like, oh, you know, and that's too, again, that's too much hyper focus on the product, right? Where really the real value is in your people and your distribution, right? Um, you know, and that, that's what, so we're talking about focus, right? You have a short-term focus and a long-term focus. Short-term is always about your product. 
right? That's not the most useful focus. The most useful focus is the network and the, your audience that you're building that you can, right? right? I have people who are still buying. I'm sure you do too. For me, like back from 2005, they're still buying, yeah. right? Yeah. My products have changed significantly, <laughs> right? Or they're still buying my recommendations, right? Yeah. Um, but sometimes when the economy gets bad, like your ability to produce is more valuable, that's right. Not less valuable, right? Um, your ability to somebody who know, knows how to breathe, <laughs> you know, or has you know oxygen breathing apparatus is it that, that, that <laughs> help in a low oxygen environment is going to become very very popular, right? So uh, it, to get back to your original, I try to coach my people. It's like focus on the long term and focus on your ability to produce under any economic circumstance, right? Money is not like money is just a symbol of value. No more than can you eat a picture of a hamburger. Right. Like money is not going to keep you safe, right? right. Like, yeah. You know? yeah that's, <laughs> I love I love that example. Travis, you've had your own unique challenges these last couple of years. Have you had freak out moments? Do you have moments in which your cage gets rattled? And if so, how do you respond now differently than 10 years ago? I do, but like this almost sounds unbelievable, but they probably don't last probably maximum an hour. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, and usually I can go for a walk or I have, I have my, 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 creative thing like either I think we're similar in this either journaling or going for a walk just getting that getting that perspective right um for me it works for me better to have alone time right some people that it helps to talk it out I think and I think that does help me on some levels right but most of the time it's just a matter of me remembering that it's not the world out there that's the problem it's my thoughts about the world and what I'm attaching yeah. it usually comes back to, it almost always comes back to where does Travis say you feel threatened, right? Where, right, right. Where have I gotten back together? Where, where am I having a booty call <laughs> with Travis? You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, back to back together with that. Because usually, anytime like I have those freakouts, like I'm, I'm just worried about like how they're going to view me, right? Or how you know, but my big thing is like, I hate letting people down. Like that's still like, I hate letting people down, right? Like if I feel like I've let somebody down, right? That's that can be that can be triggering for me, right? If I feel like I've let somebody down, right? That's probably a, um, one of my trigger points. If something will come up, it'll probably be around the area of me letting them down. Like half the time, like because of the way I run my business and everything, like I always go into things as tests, and it's mostly a story. Like I'm like, look, dude, like this campaign ain't gonna work out like I thought it was, and like that's okay, dude. Like. <sighs> Yeah, I really want to knock it out of the park for you. You know, it's like those kind of things, right? But, mm. um, you know, it's interesting you say that. I'm just observing something in you because that's your trigger. And that's the thought, like, I might let somebody down. That would be your shit, as we've yeah. called it on, on this conversation. The way that you've turned that into sugar is you are really, really good at low risk deals. You, most of your deals that I've seen you structure, yeah. even with me, have been, I'll take the risk and we'll create a profit share agreement. I'll test yeah. really small. I consider yeah. myself an investor. So yeah, you know, there's no skin off your back. If it goes well, I'll do more of it. If not, you know, we had a nice test. And we've had that happen before. Yeah. You know, where and I never thought anything of it. it was up. Oh, I mean, didn't work so well. We've had some do really well. Yeah. And what I'm noticing about you is that. That's how you turn that shit into sugar. That's it. I've kind of molded my business around me instead of me around the business. Right. Beautiful. Um, you know, I think I think it's more it's a more integral way to do business, anyways. It's like what's like I don't want to beat up on Facebook ad agencies, but you know, they they come <laughs> in like, hey, give me five grand a month, right? Sign a six month contract. I pro super yeah. promise pinky swear that you're gonna get these CPAs that you want, right? <laughs> you, you know, super promise, pick and swear. Like, yeah. there's no guarantee, you won't get your money back and there's no guarantees, right? <laughs> but, you know, and it's like, damn, that's like, 
that's like going from coffee to like a marriage, right? So I'm just kind of like, let's, do, <laughs> let's let's have hello, coffee date, first date. Maybe we'll go steady and then have a marriage, right? Um, um, that's worked way better for me because I don't I don't want to like say that I know this is going to work when again this is me going to back to the I don't know if shit's going to work anymore, right? I just put stuff out there. I look at the data, right, and then I turn based off of what the data gives me, right? Um, and I've done that enough times. I'm pretty good at maneuvering around the data, right? But I don't try to forecast it before I get involved in it. Well, Travis, uh, I wish more people knew about your work, which is why I like to think I'm, I might be your number one influencer. <laughs> I might I may, might be. Um, it makes me proud when I see people in your Facebook groups and your masterminds and I'm like, hey, that's from my group. I, I, so, think, you're, I think you're correct about that. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. So I no, you don't put out a ton of content publicly, but I think the one place people can follow you is in your Facebook group. Is there another place where people can get there? Yeah, their that's probably the best place. Ghost? Again, this sounds braggadocious, but all, most of my programs are full up and except that I'm running an experiment um, mm-hmm. with people. So, um, but I'd like to talk about offers at million dollar offer mojo.com, which will just redirect you over to the Facebook group. Um, but my thing is like, I may just made a post, like I'm not really trying to become popular, right? Like I would like to, I'm not trying to figure out how to, to blow people's minds, right. In a way that, um, gives them a, a shorter path to a result that they want breakthroughs and those kind of things. So if I can provide that value, um, that's what I'm about now serendipitously, if that, if any popularity comes out of that, like I'm, you know, I do have an ego. Um, I am grateful for that. Right. But that's what I try to focus on. It's more useful focal point for me to, to do that. But yeah. And I like talking about offer. So that'd be the, probably the best place for them to mix their peanut butter with my jelly. If we were going <laughs> to do something like that. Very good. Travis, it's always a joy to hang out with you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your wisdom too. with the world. Thanks, man. Good to see you, my friend.